Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are watching this. Hey! <laughs> so as y'all already read the title down below, we are about to review Single Black Female 2, Simone's Revenge. And I am so excited because I actually liked the first movie and I also did an interview with Amber Riley who plays Simone recently. And she gave so much insight on the film. So now that I've watched it, I got so many things to talk about. But before we jump into the review, y'all already know what to do. Like this video, comment your thoughts, and last but certainly not least, subscribe and join the queen of baby. So let's get into it. So after watching this movie, I am so mad because the ending was horrible. And not horrible as in the acting, but in the writing and the plot. And it did not make sense. It was just not adding up. And the producers and the writers could be setting us up for a part three to the movie but it still could have been better than what we were given. I feel like the movie was drawn out and we were waiting to see how Simone will react towards Monica and how Monica will receive Simone knowing that now, well now fully knowing that she's alive, even though she had an assumption that she was alive, now she really knows her half sister is not dead. And it just felt incomplete. And I hate that because like I said, the first movie was really, really good. But we all know the sequel to movies is never as great as the original, but still I had faith. I really had faith. But the movie wasn't bad, so let's not say it was terrible, terrible, horrible, horrible. So let me not say horrible. It just wasn't, you know, as good as the original. <laughs> but let's break down the film and decipher where everything went wrong because it definitely started off good with the exception of some random flashbacks. We see with Simone and some crying baby and the overall ending just being flat and... Uh, so if you all remember from the last movie, Simone dies in a fire, at least we thought. So I was confused when we got a single black female too because baby, how did she get out of that fire? I mean, I know they say crazy and the little people move like the devil, but this was some different type of dark magic. Like what was going on? Because it was just no way she should have escaped that fire or the house overall. Like it was just no way. But anyways, that's how the movie opens up with the three year throwback of the house fire and all the things Monica went through with her long lost sister. And then boom, we see a clip of Simone falling in the middle of the road. So, you know, there goes my answer on how she survived or knowing that she survived. Oh, and before I continue to say what I have to say about the movie, let me just say this, because it really irritates me that Simone will always grab on to the follow of her dad father Every chance she get or every time she's feeling some type of way and say like, oh, I just wish you was here or, oh, I could really use your advice right now because I don't like the fact that she hasn't expressed how upset she is with her father because if we being honest, he is the one that caused all the chaos in her life. Like it was him. He was the one that cheated on her mom. He was the one that had a child. He the one who, you know, well, the mom did too, but he was the one that hid, you know, her sister from her. And on top of that, he met up with Simone before, you know, he died, even though she was the one that killed him. But regardless of the fact, he was the one that kept Monica completely blind and unaware for years. And don't get me wrong, everything Simone does is flat out crazy, but the dad was her trigger. And Monica has the right to still love her father and miss him, but it would be great to see her show a little anger at him for her life falling apart, that's all I'm saying. But anyways, Monica has moved to Seattle with her best friend, BB, to start a new life, which makes sense after all the mess she had to deal with in Houston. And I love that BB is working with her on a new show she is now hosting. We love when friends can help each other out. You know, that's, that's we working across, working across, okay? But this is the thing. We all know BB is the crazy friend, the ratchet friend, the wild friend, the blunt friend. Like we know this is who she is. So I was just intrigued to see how she was gonna, you know, be in a, this new corporate world that she's about to enter. But moving on in the movie, we get the reveal that Simone is not dead and this sick, the little girl is now working with nuns in the lowest house. <laughs> like who is writing this? Who is writing this? <laughs> And not only that, she has lost her memory and doesn't remember anything. And once I realized that, I already knew where the storyline was heading. And guess what? All Simone needed to see or hear was Monica and Boo. Her memory all of a sudden comes back. You know, they, they do say it, it, that's all it takes sometimes. Like just that slight little thing that you can relate to or you can remember from your past life and boom, you all of a sudden have your memory back. But I think she was faking. I don't care if nobody say, I think she was just faking it, faking it, faking it until she could figure out what Monica was. But whatever. 
Now, in a scene with a nun, Simone is being called Grace by one of the sisters, and she is talking about how she wish she can know where she came from and things of that nature. And as I am watching, the only thing that's going through my mind is I think something is up with these nuns. But I think that's just how nuns are. Like, I feel like the whole purpose of, you know, nuns is to, you know, look away from, you know, people's past or whatever they is running from, from or whatever they got going on and not really being into people's business and to guide them to the Lord. But a demon like Simone cannot be guided. I'm sorry. All those loose screws cannot be reconnected. Point blank, period. It just cannot. <laughs> also, the fact that the nuns found Simone and took her to the church house and didn't take this random injured lady to the hospital to get treated and let the poli police question her and arrest her was just all around weird to me. But I digress. Hell, at one point, I thought the whole movie plot was going to take a complete turn and Simone was going to be the one kidnapped, used, and abused by the nuns but the way they were at, by the way they were acting. But that wasn't the case because they adored this sicko person they is now calling Grace, who was really Simone. Talking about some, we call you Grace because it's God's grace. We found you that night and brought you here to the church so we can take care of you. Ma'am, no it wasn't. That was not God's grace. What God's grace would have been is sending her to the police so she can get locked up. That would have been God's grace. But again, I digress. Moving on in the movie, Monica is at her job checking things out and meeting new people she would start working with. And already the folks at the job, mainly her producer, Kendall, is being so nasty and so rude. And I'm aggravated because not only has she been through so much already, and everybody knows all the stuff she has been through, but now she has to deal with mean girls at her job. Like, dang, she can't even catch a break. Don't nobody have time for that I'm top dog, you little dog mess. Like, honestly, truly, nobody has time for that. I just want to do my job and be safe, baby. All the beef, leave it at the door. And not to be that girl, but black women diminishing another black woman in the workplace is so lame and just tired. It's so tired. Like, girl, we get it. You are the producer of the show, I'm the host, relax, okay? We get it. But crazy enough, Kendall wasn't even the worst person that Monica had an interaction with on her first day. But it ended up being her makeup artist, Layla, we got introduced to who was just rude and nasty to Monica and Bibi for no reason. Like, girl, what is going on? And to be honest, the moment she started popping out the mouth crazy to Monica, she should have been fired, point blank, period. I don't care how long Layla was working at the news station. You are not supposed to be rude, especially to the person who is technically your boss. And on top of that, I wouldn't trust her to do my face because what if she had me going out there looking like a clown? I can't trust it. Talking about, um, I don't do small talk. No small talk. I want to focus. I want to focus. Girl, don't play with me because you and your silence will be unemployed. Anyways, after Monica has to deal with all these hating ass women at her new job, it's time for her new show to start and she is instantly set up and put on the spot to talk about her situation where she was stopped by Simone because she had a guest on the show, Detective Trevor, who just caught a serial killer. Well, not a serial killer, but a serial stalker. So I can't say the same thing, huh? Right? So the whole idea was for Monica to feed off of that story and connect it to hers, which was a great idea. In my producer mindset as well, it was a great idea. But Monica didn't know about the story, nor did she want to talk about her own story. So that had her upset, rightfully so. She was not wrong for being mad about that whole situation. But in a way, I also fought Monica for not knowing what she was getting on air to do. She, because she should have been on her P's and Q's the moment she felt the hostility from her producer. That's just what it is. Like the moment she came at you with the rah, 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 you should have been her uh, uh, like, yeah. So you just know what's going on. But she got it done and that's all that matters. But even better than that, she ended up into a little fling with Detective Trevor and I love that for her, baby, because she needed a little fun and a little mm, in her life, okay? <laughs> Plus, he was a detective, so anytime she may have felt unsafe, she could have been like, oh, detective, save me, save me, Detective Trevor. <laughs> Granted, Trevor couldn't do too much saving up his own damn life, okay? <laughs> but anyways, of course, once the show aired and Simone's name was brought up, it was like a hypnosis click for her and instantly all her memories came back and she started up with her sickleness. <laughs> Simone is sicko. And went back on her rampage of killing the first per person she had a um, situation with. 
Now, don't get me wrong. The person that Simone killed after gaining her memory back was rude as hell to her. And you never know what people are going through and the type of demons they are battling. So why poke the bear if you don't even have to? The girl was just being mean and nasty for no reason, but I digress. Once I got to the point of Simone gaining her memory back and getting ready to go back after Monica, I think this is where I knew the direction of the movie was going to take a left turn for me because I needed to know, one, how the hell was Simone able to get from Seattle to Houston with no money? Like, they never show her with money. What is the money? Where is the money? Like, no money, no ID, just no nothing. Just a vendetta and vibes. Make it make sense. I just hate that they leave empty holes like this in a film that is damn near two hours long. And on top of that, the fact that she gets easy access to certain people and places is so crazy to me. But then again, we are dealing with someone who is crazy. So baby girl always make a way. I don't know how she make the way. We never know how to see her make a way, but she makes a way. <laughs> Anyways, now that Simone has found Monica, she eases her way into living with the rude makeup artist I was telling y'all about, the makeup artist girl, Layla. And all I know is they both are nutty as hell. Layla isn't as bad as Simone, but she is definitely up there. And because they are now roommates, they start getting close and bonding with one another. But Layla feels like something is off with Simone at the time and she is calling her Grace, but Layla can't figure it out. So Simone is just being nice, doing things for Layla, as well as helping Layla be nice to Monica. But really, Simone is just planting seeds through um, planting seeds through Layla so she can get close to Monica. And everything is working out in her favor because not only did she get Layla to place a mic in Monica's office so she can listen to all, you know, all of Monica's conversations, she was able to use Layla's work key card to gain access to the news building, get into Monica's office so she can hack her phone and dig through her computer. Oh. and kill Kendall. <laughs> now, the Kendall killing was crazy to me because I honestly think that, I honestly thought that she was going to survive, but I should have known better. Also, Kendall was dumb for running after Simone. Like, she knew that she was someone that was a serial stalker and killer. Like, that made no sense to me, just doing too much. And not only that, the fact that you are chasing someone and can't find them and proceeds to go to your car and not check your surroundings, like, are you serious, girl? Think, 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 think. So her death could have been prevented, but well, she met her demise. And of course, Monica was framed for it since Simone was able to, find, um, you know, go through her computer and send HR basically an email from a doc of Monica saying she wanted Kendall dead or something of that nature. But Monica was dumb to admit it in a note. Like, Monica, why would you, why would you do that? Not admit it in the note, but she admitted that um, she wrote the note that was sent to HR to a detective that was, you know, investigating the scene, investigating everything that happened. All I know is she was supposed to lie, 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 and lie again and blame Simone, hell, blame anybody for that matter, but don't damn admit it. That's all I know. So that was the first thing she did wrong in my eyes because at this point, she had a strong feeling that Simone was, you know, still alive because Somebody was trying to get into the bathroom when she was in it, when she was bridal shopping or wedding dress shopping, which I don't even know why they was doing that, but that was BB idea. But that was wedding dress shopping and somebody was trying to get into the bathroom and she felt like it was Simone, like it was just in her soul, but she couldn't prove it, of course, but she just knew it was Simone. And speaking of that scene, man, BB pissed me off because how was she going to tell Monica no one was in the bathroom and she didn't even check for real. Like, why does no one check their surroundings in this movie? What is going on? Seriously, like, we are black. We gonna move a little different than some other people. I mean, some, everybody don't got all the common sense in the world, but you gonna move different, like, different. We gonna think, seriously, especially if somebody out there. So after that whole situation happened at the bridal shop, Monica had Detective Trevor look into the case with Simone to see if she was still alive or not, just so, you know, she can ease her mind. And of course, and plus, she was landing on him, so of course he was gonna be like, yeah, I handle that for you, baby, or whatever. <laughs> so he does it for her, and then he finds out that the police in Houston did not find any human remains in the house after the whole fire situation, which is crazy to me because why is that something she doesn't already know? I feel like the detectives back in Texas should have told her that three years ago so she can move accordingly. Like what type of lackluster investigating and informing is these people doing? 
Also, Monica should have been on top of it too and asking them for updates, especially since she was the one always so jumpy and scared every time she turned the corner. But needless to say, Trevor found that out and wanted to let her know. So he tasked her to come over to his house so they can discuss it. But she never received a test because like I told y'all er earlier, Simone had hacked her phone and her computer and everything, everything else. So Simone was able to delete the message before Monica can see it. And it was Simone, somebody did show it to Trevor House and it was, it ended up being Simone. And it seemed, I was, oh, I can't even get the words out. I was boiling when I seen this scene because for one, Simone showed up with her face covered acting, acting like she was, you know, doing a little role play because that was something Monica and Trevor did, but she never hear her face. At least when we seen her, she never hear her face, but it's something she would do. But she wasn't supposed to be over there for all that. She was there, you know, to get the information. So the fact that the person who showed up to his door isn't showing signs of concern, but was showing signs of lust, should have been all the proof he needed that something was off, especially if he claims to be a detective. But he didn't follow any of the contest clues and folded immediately for Simone, and it cost him his life. But he did do one thing right before being killed, and that was emailing Simone the proof she needed to know that, some, you know, Simone was, was alive or could be alive. Another thing that made me mad with the death of Detective Trevor was the fact that Detective Hudson, who is the same detective that asked Monica about the killing earlier, the killing of Kendall, her producer, um, he receives a random phone call about doing a wellness check at Detective Trevor's home. For one, that should have been suspect for him. And two, when he showed up, he didn't even know who Detective Trevor was. So now I'm confused on why they don't know each other. And they work in the same city and they both are detectives. That just, that was confusing. Like why you don't even know who this dead man is in front of you? Like that was just so off to me. And then on top of that, the nosy neighbor just walked on in the house and instantly started blaming Monica because she always seen Monica, you know, at his house walking in because she was just always being nosy like i hate nosy people and all and the crazy thing is all she seen was the back of simone who she thought was monica but she only seen the back of simone and i'm confused because why you just gonna assume that was monica because of her back like they just like he can be sleeping with all kind of women maybe he like bit the women how you just gonna claim it's me like that's crazy and then on top of that Monica and Simone bodies, not even the same. Like they are not built the same anymore. Maybe in the first movie, you know, they had this, the same body, but not this movie because Simone was giving body yaddy 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 yaddy. So that's just crazy. She just randomly assumed Monica and Doctor Detective Doctor Detective Hudson, you know, believed it was her because she already had one body on her. So he like, oh well, this gotta be her, her second body too. So now I'm like, oh my God, she got two bodies attached to her name. Like, oh my God. But to be honest, the killing of Detective Trevor should have been proven that it actually was not Monica and it was Simone that killed him. Because I feel like there was enough of Simone's fingerprints on the scene to prove it, it was her. Hell, she literally left the murder weapon on the scene. So that should have been the, um, all the evidence that they needed in my opinion so and that should have honestly been a, the, the, the scene where the movie ended yeah simone should have been caught at that point because her fingerprints was all over the place like it made no sense it really made no sense but no we deal with more mess like messy layla who was probably the dumbest yet the smartest character i think in a way sort of kind of mm -hmm. she was crazy too but mm, in a way so Layla ended up finding out that Grace, her roommate, is actually Simone, Monica's stalker sister. But I think Layla already had a dislike for Monica and bonded so well with Simone that she didn't care. So she was willing to let Simone do her thing. Hell, she was even helping by acting like she was plotting and planning to capture Simone with BB and Monica. Oh, Jesus. With BB and Monica, the whole time she was getting information just to give to Simone. Now don't get me wrong. Layla was right in doing and saying what she needed to do so Simone wouldn't kill her. Hell, that's what everyone should do. But she went the dumb way when she didn't call the cops on Simone and get out of the mess completely. Like, why would you, 
want to ruin your life for someone you don't even know and get into a beef that has nothing to do with you. That is complete insanity. Like, that's crazy. And she was unalive for it because Simone didn't need her anymore or care for her. At the end of the day, all Simone cared about was getting Simone. And Layla, you were just another body to add on to Monica. Like, she already had two, baby, you the third. That's all you was. You was just a placeholder, baby. You was never a partner in crime. You was always a partner, a part of a crime scene. But needless to say, everything that Simone put in place to get back at Monica was working. And before Monica could end Simone's life, Detective Hudson and more officers got a hold of Monica and arrested her because she was on top of Simone. So it looked like she was the problem. And she ended up going to jail. How she ended up in jail? And I was mind blown because there is no way the movie ended like that. Like no damn way. I don't care what it may have looked like to Detective Hudson and the other officers that arrested Monica. Monica and Simone both should have been taken down to the precinct and both of them should have been questioned plus more. There is no way Monica should have been in jail or if she did get in, go to jail, why Simone not in there with her? Why she not in there with her? There's just no way. There's just no way that Monica should have been in jail with, uh, with Simone not only out and about living her free life, but being able to pop up and visit Monica in jail. Like how the hell is that even possible? It was so much evidence that could have pointed all the kills to Simone. So they completely dropped the ball as officers and completely dropped the ball as writers for this movie because they had to know that this was not realistic at all like let's be for real that was not the ending we should have gotten like i'm disappointed we should not have gotten that ending and that wasn't even the real ending on top of that <laughs> i thought that's how it was gonna end and that wasn't how it ended but clearly they are trying to set us up for you know a part three of the movie because throughout the movie we kept saying i told y'all earlier these random flashbacks of Simone having a baby and her mom giving up the baby for um, adoption and you know, all of that craziness. But the flashbacks alone was so freaking random because we never knew she had a baby. And on top of that, the way they introduced it into the storyline was so random. Like, why is this girl blanking out every time she hears a baby crying or see a photo of a baby? Oh, it's because she done had a baby, but we never knew that. So that was just, uh, uh, we could have we could have introduced that a little better writers okay y'all need me over there on the writing team or just get help with some direction but to end off the movie simone heads back to the church with her you know her nun friend sister margaret who i still think is a little off i think sister margaret is off <laughs> and while the two of them are talking this little girl pops up her name is joy and sister margaret introduces her to simone kind of find out joy is simone's daughter and it's like sister margaret how the hell did you find this girl and let alone get her to show up and to meet this random lady she don't even know we're just missing so many points and it's just a lot of rushing going on in the movie and the rushing is happening towards the end like i feel like they could have built all this all of this up way better than what they did it just felt like they just rushed everything towards the end and i that's what i didn't like because the ending part was honestly the worst part it was horrible because we just randomly got it but it the idea of it was great but needless to say if there will be a part three to the movie I need to see it immediately because something about Simone's daughter is off. Hell, maybe she is crazy like her mama and it's going to play out. And either Joy, the daughter, will do to her mama what her mama been doing to her Monica. Or maybe Joy and Simone will, you know, go on a crazy power trip together. I don't know, but I need it. I need it, I need it. And I need it done right. <laughs> they don't need to drag it out. They don't need to drag the plot out. They don't. I don't need to see none of that. Get to the point because... It's a lot of craziness that can go down with that storyline of a mother-daughter duo or however the situation will happen or, you know, the, the mindset that you all, the writers are over there thinking about with the movie. I don't know, but I need it because I think it could be good if, you, if, if done right. If done right. But anyways, that's enough of me doing all this rambling. Y'all already know what to do. Like this video and show your girl some love. Drop a comment below and let's discuss your thoughts on the movie. Now that you have heard all of my thoughts, I would love to hear some of y'all. You know, so let's have a little discussion in the, in the comments. Let, let me hear y'all different perspectives on the movie. And last but certainly not least, subscribe and join the Queen of Baby. Bye.